All right, greetings everyone. This is going to be a really quick tutorial while I work on some other stuff. Um, it's very simple, but I don't see it very well documented and I think it might be helpful to some folks. So this is just to create a default 3D scene um, in Godot 4 where you have the ability to add UI elements and also to take care of just setting defaults up so that you, so you don't see just a blank screen. So I'm gonna just save this as a default scene because you know we start off and you see this instead of the 3D environment. So the reason for that alone is because there's no default environment like there was in Godot 3. But back to the setup, I'm gonna change the type of this to a canvas layer. Now uh, the reason I'm doing that is this is what's gonna let us um, add UI if we want to later. We don't have to, but if you go with this setup then it allows you to do it if you decide to after the fact. So just for organizational purposes, I'm going to just put a um, root 3D node. Now that's going to be what everything else goes off of besides any UI elements. So now this won't help us see anything yet. What we need for actually setting up the environment is environment, world environment actually. So here, I'll just go over here and click new environment. You click on the environment right in here, and then it'll open this up. Go to the background and set it to sky. I mean, set it to whatever you want. You know, if you do, if you want to see that instead. But this is just gives you something reasonably easy on the eyes to start with. So then, just create a new sky here, and then a new procedural sky material, and there we've got that. But again, if we were to try and play this, it doesn't look very beautiful yet. So we need to set up, uh, you know, as well as the environment, a default camera. This is where it's a little, I, I feel counterintuitive, but I'm sure there's good reason for it. So we need the, instead of just viewport, they've, this is now sub viewport, like there's sub viewport container. And then we need to actually add the sub viewport. I'm assuming that's so that you can potentially add multiple or something of that nature. So you see, we um, now we're starting to see something. And this is just, 512 by 512 is the default. We'll be changing that. Within the viewport then, now we need the camera. I'm going to make it a camera 3D. And now if we look at the... I don't see the pink here. So let's make this HD resolution. And this is where it's a little buggy. I've seen all sorts of different things happen when you do this. Now that's very fascinating. So this is one of the problems. So if I hit play right now, you notice it will show um, the actual environment, but this is just janky. I've had times in the past, maybe maybe they fixed that in the recent Godot, um, Alpha 3 release here, excuse me, Beta 3. Um, so I don't know if this is gonna be consistent or not, but what I've had is it would actually not show it when you hit play like that, when you, you know after you did this. But even so, to get rid of the jankiness, I'm just gonna restart Godot. So give me just a moment. Of course, it's appearing on my other monitor. Bring it over here. So yeah, so now we've restarted it. So now if you look at the sub viewport now, this is displaying what you expect to see. Uh, so that's that's nice. Um, but that's one of the gotchas that I wanted to address in Godot 4. So now for the, um, now we've got the basic setup just to have something in the scene to give us a, you know, something to juxtapose. I'm just going to do the classic capsule, uh, mesh instance 3D. And then we're just going to go over here. This is just going to be an object and then it's going to have this mesh. We'll create a capsule mesh. Let's just for fun give it a material. A standard material 3D is fine. Doesn't really matter too much. And the albedo will just give us purple. Sure, why not? So again, now you see we don't see this. This is now this one's a little more obvious, but the reason for that is because the, we've set the viewport here to full HD resolution, but this blue line here represents your actual pro, you know, pro, what it's set in the project settings, your game window, so to speak. So if you go into again project settings here and then go to the window. You can set this up to be more representative. I like to set this to, um, I don't know, something not like not quite the full size uh, vertically. 
the reason for that, see, so see now it adjusted like this. But the reason I wanted that is uh, I would set this before actually releasing or you know fin and putting a final product out. I would set that to the full amount. This just enables me to be able to quickly grab that top bar when testing instead of having it you know off the screen, which can be a little annoying. Hopefully they'll have a way to get around that. But now, like, where's our capsule? Um, I think I know why. Yeah, so you need to, the camera starts in the middle, so that's not rocket science. We'll back that out. And then you'll see that represented in the 2D view. So you'll see what you'll actually, what you're actually going to see. So I'll try that just to make sure. Good. Now, again, the purpose for this root canvas is so that you can have UI buttons if you want to. So as you saw, you don't have to, but then if you do want them, just go in here and add a button. And let's put test button as text. It does, that's kind of nice. It actually automatically fills that out. Um, but if you wanted, you can obviously make this a little bigger or do whatever you want. And you can do your VBox con containers, HBox containers, and all that stuff down here if you wanted to actually fully set up the UI. But point being is you have a 3D environment, a 3D camera, and then you hook this up, uh, you know, as you would normally.